Good day. When it comes to YouTubers such as myself, we see the same old stuff all the time. Game reviews and let's plays. Well, you know what? I'm getting rather weary of being stuck in a room. And you know what? I imagine you guys probably are too. Which is why today we're going to have our first road trip. Oh yes! And where are we going to be road tripping with General Oz 2? Galveston, an awe-inspiring island that is fairly close to Houston, Texas. There, we're going to Sea Wolf Park, where we're going to be taking a look at the USS Kavala and the USS Stewart. Now, this is going to be a two-part video, mainly because exploring the ships actually takes a bit of time, and I imagine you guys don't want to sit here for two hours while we go through the bloody ships. So with that, let's pile into the car and head out to Galveston! Now to reach Galveston Island, we of course have to pass by downtown Houston. Not only does it look pretty cool, it's of course filled with traffic! But thankfully it didn't take that long to reach Pelican Island here. Yes, it took about an hour and a half to reach this particular location. Now, Galveston Island is literally just a few feet away, but this is its own island proper. And you can reach Pelican Island via a causeway. The island itself has a considerable amount of things to do on it, including ship watching, which is a lot of fun to say the least, and has a lot of cool ships out there plying the waves, including that awesome container ship which is absolutely massive to say the least. Now of course we're going to be taking a look at the first ship on our roster, which is the SS Selma. It of course is that black speck all the way out there. It's a ship actually made out of concrete. Now it did not sink because of that. Mainly, it sank because it crashed into a jetty and ripped a 60-foot hole in the side. It was built in 1919 out of concrete, mainly because there was a steel shortage. Now, the park itself is named after the USS Seawolf. The USS Seawolf was a submarine that fought in World War II and earned 13 battle stars, but sadly it would be sunk due to a blue-on-blue -blue engagement, meaning that friendly fire isn't. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the sail from the USS Tautog, a Sturgeon-class attack sub that served during the Cold War. Now, one notable adventure that it went on was where it was shadowing a Soviet sub known as the K-108, and they ended up colliding with one another. Now, thankfully, nobody actually died in that collision. Now, what we're looking at here is the USS Savala itself, and by the great Yzmir, does it look awesome. Now this is a Gato-class submarine, and it formed the core of the submarine force that was used in World War II in the Pacific Theater. This particular submarine was built in 1943, and the USS Kavala is known as a hero ship as it was responsible for destroying the Japanese carrier Shoaku. The ship displaces 1,525 long tons when surfaced and 2,424 long tons when submerged. Its length is 311 feet, 9 inches. Its beam is 27 feet, 3 inches, and its draft is 14 feet. Its top speed is 21 knots surfaced and 9 knots submerged. And it has a range of 11,000 nautical miles at 10 knots. And has an endurance of 48 hours submerged at 2 knots. Can you imagine being submerged under 300 feet of water for 48 hours? Now, keep in mind, not only can it submerge to 300 feet, but it also has a complement of 6 officers and 54 enlisted. Imagine being stuck down there with all those bloody people. It is armed with 10 torpedo tubes, 6 forward and 4 aft, and can carry 24 torpedoes total. This particular type of submarine was meant to be a fleet submarine. They were to scout ahead of the fleet and report on an enemy's composition, speed, and course. They were then to attack and reduce the number of enemy units prior to a fleet action. As we now know, World War II fleet actions did not work in the way that planners thought, as the aircraft carrier reigned supreme over the big gun battleship. But all of its attributes actually made it quite useful for commerce raiding. So now that you know the tech specs, now it's time for me to do some gushing. Well, the USS Kavala is cool. Basically, I was nerding out the entire time walking around this bloody thing. It's one thing to read some tech specs on a Wikipedia page, but it's another to actually be there. Now, you'll probably notice a woman in a blue shirt following me around throughout this particular video, and the USS Stewart. That is actually my mother, who elected to come along with me on this particular outdoor adventure, as she enjoys seeing these various museum exhibits. Now, you also notice something else. I'm using a different camera from the norm. This is actually my brand new E-Tech Minicam. 
similar to the GoPro, except it's a lot cheaper. And for whatever reason, there's a purple dot right in the middle of the screen, and I'm not really sure why that's there. That purple dot really annoys me. At first, when I was playing back the footage, I thought it was a bug that had landed on the lens. Uh, but it's not. For whatever reason, when I'm directly recording the submarine, there's a purple dot right there. As you can see, it just disappeared as we passed this old ticket booth. I'm not really sure why that's there. That has nothing to do with a submarine, but it just sort of is. I guess that was the old ticket booth before they got a new uh, ticket location. But overall, the submarine is just so awesome. It's just so big, and it, you got to keep in mind, this thing's actually pretty small in ship terms. A Nimitz would make that thing look like a bloody canoe, and there, of course, is the submarine's primary armament, a torpedo, and that thing's pretty bloody huge in and of itself. No wonder it's able to sink an aircraft carrier in three hits. Now, as we climb these stairs, you got to remember, we're climbing up 17 feet here, because that's how tall the bloody submarine is, and that's just really cool to me for whatever reason. The decking here is made out of wood, and I'm not sure if back in World War II it would have been made out of wood, because I would think that a wood deck would actually decay fairly quickly in the Pacific humidity. But, possibly as to not, and I guess they could have treated it with something back in the day. And that, of course, is the sail right there. I believe that's where the bridge and the periscope and all that bric-a-brac is actually located. And there are some windows there as well. I would be actually quite nervous to be around those while submerged. So now, let's actually dive deep within the submarine. There's actually quite the line here, which was kind of annoying, because it's one of those, like, somebody goes down, and you still gotta stand there. Somebody goes down, and you still gotta stand there. And really, that ladder right there is actually pretty bloody steep, to say the least. Now, there is a number of people in here, and I'm actually kind of happy there are, because it'll show you just how cramped this thing really is. And keep in mind, this is a big submarine. This is actually supposed to have a pretty good amount of spaciousness to it. And just look at all the stuff in here. It's crazy just how much crap they've shoved into this submarine. I mean, it looked big on the outside, but you gotta remember, it's still gotta fit all that stuff on the inside. And that is actually the front torpedo launcher right there, and it's really quite cool indeed. I cannot imagine how you'd actually remember all the crap you gotta do to get a submarine to actually work. Of course, there are a few people standing in front of it, but eventually I will get a slightly better view of that. One really cool thing is it is air-conditioned, as I will mention a little bit later. And as you can see, there's just so much stuff going on here. And you gotta remember, there's roughly 70 people crammed into this beauty thing, and sometimes this, this uh, submarine would take on some passengers as well. And that would be pretty bloody annoying, and I believe up there is potentially the bridge? I'm not really sure. I don't really know the deck layout all that well. Really, one of the reasons why you have to be fairly crazy to be a submariner is you got to actually be stuck in this tin can for months at a time. You're stuck in there. And it's just crazy. Just look at all the different buttons and switches and all kinds of crazy crap. It's amazing. Now, the camera might look a little blue at times. That's because I'm using the tungsten setting. And it does not like lighting changes all that much. Now, a little bit, you guys are going to see something a little bit humorous. I actually misjudge the size of a certain location in this particular ship. And the microphone for the camera is actually pretty good as well. And there, of course, is me taking a picture of somebody taking a picture. It's bloody meta, ladies and gentlemen. But you gotta remember one other thing is, not only do you have to know how all this stuff works, but you also have to know how to maintain it as well. That is also crazy. That's why a lot of these machinist mates and things of that nature are really, really good mechanics, is because they really have to know all kinds of crap to keep their submarines working. Once again, I'm not going into the subservice, like, at all. I may be crazy, but I'm not that bloody crazy. Now... I actually have the camera mounted on my chest. I'm not really that short. I'm actually about five foot nine. Now we're actually about to take a look at something quite hilarious. That uh, particular little cubicle there is actually the officer's head. What is that? It's the toilet. Yeah, that's your bathroom right there. So yeah, you are in a tiny little enclosed space and you're about to be in an even tinier enclosed space. Fun times indeed. It's just every square inch of this bloody thing is packed with something. Oh yeah, that sink back there? That's one of two that I could find. I'm going. People in line waiting. Man, can you, you imagine? Go, you Ow. Back 
<laughs> I just cracked my skull there. So yeah, you thought those hatchways looked small? Well, they're even smaller than you'd think. Thankfully, throughout the rest of this particular tour, I didn't actually crack my skull any other time. And I was actually trying to show you the scale of just how small everything in here actually is. Because this probably looks a little bit bigger on camera, but if you're actually in there and you're of any appreciable size, you're pretty bloody cramped. There is almost no room to move around in this bloody thing. And keep in mind, there's almost 70 people in this bloody ship with you. 70 people, and this is the big one! The big one! I just can't really wrap my head around that. I mean, on camera, it doesn't look that bad. But really, I'm not even claustrophobic, and I felt a little bit claustrophobic in this bloody ship. So I can't imagine, you know, being in this ship and getting bombs dropped on me, or getting death charges tossed at me. That would just... Uh, yeah, there's the captain's quarters. Yeah, that's the captain's quarters. That's what he gets, and that's still a beyond... My closet's bigger than that! Okay? So you think Captain Picard's doing bad with his bloody ready room? That's the petty officer's quarters. There's hardly any room to move around in there. And it's just... It, there's no room to do hardly anything. I, that's the chief petty officer's quarters, to be precise. And there's another sink. Okay, I didn't notice that one. But there's barely any amenities in it. It is a war vessel, after all. But still, you're stuck in a tin can months of the time. And you gotta share everything. Ugh. What is still really quite crazy to me is the fact that this is actually supposed to be a huge sub for the time. I just can't imagine being packed in something smaller than this. Now, since it was so big, it was supposed to be a slow diver when compared to subs of other nations. Initially, the sub could dive from surface to periscope depth in 45 to 50 seconds, which to me seems fairly fast. But by mid-war, they got it down to 30 to 35 seconds. Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen, that is insanely fast. To me, at least. The boats were also somewhat less maneuverable than other nations' subs as well. Hmm, I could insert a joke about fat Americans here, but, well, I'm not. Because if you're fat, you ain't fitting in that sub, that's for sure. I'm not fat, and I can barely fit in it. After the war, the subs would actually be fitted with an additional rudder to try to alleviate the maneuverability problems. The subs all had air conditioning, and thank Yzmir for that, since it's bloody hot in Galveston this time of year. And also, it was pretty bloody hot in the warm waters of the Pacific as well. Now, in addition to keeping the crew, well, happy and efficient, the air conditioners also acted as a dehumidifier so that the ship did not get damaged by condensation. Now, on her first patrol, the Kavala tracked a task force on 17th June and relayed information which helped the United States succeed in the Battle of the Philippine Sea. And on 19 to 20 June, the Kavala caught the carrier Shawaku recovering aircraft and fired six torpedoes and hit it three times, thus sinking the enemy vessel. The Kavala would be hit with a severe death charging by three destroyers, but would escape with only minor damage. For eliminating the threat of the Shawaku, the Kavala would earn a Presidential Unit Citation. On her third patrol, the Kavala would blow up a destroyer and two converted net tenders. On her fifth patrol, the Kavala would defend the damaged HMS Terrapin and escort said ship to Fremantle. On the sixth patrol, she would be bombed accidentally by a Japanese plane that had not received the ceasefire order as the Japanese surrendered. The Kavala would remain in Tokyo Bay for the signing of the surrender on September 2nd, and then she would depart for New London. In 1946, she would be replaced in reserve, and in 1951, she would be reactivated and converted into a hunter-killer submarine. In 1961, she would help the USS Thresher fix a power failure. Sadly, the USS Thresher would sink two years later. The Kavala would eventually be decommissioned in 1963 and struck from the Naval Register in 1969. In 1971, the Kavala would be transferred to the Texas Submarine Veterans of World War II and eventually be placed on Pelican Island in Texas. What a ride indeed. The USS Kavala is an absolutely legendary ship, and yet most people haven't really heard of it. This is something that probably none of you have actually heard of before. 
really, when it comes to famous ships, the one that most people actually know of is the USS Enterprise. And I'm not even talking about the Enterprise under Captain Kirk, Picard, Garrett, and the guy from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, no. I'm talking about the USS Enterprise from both World War II and contemporary. The USS Enterprise in World War II was one of the most legendary ships of all time. Sadly, it was scrapped. But really, the Kavala here has quite the storied history indeed. Its crew underwent many, many stresses. Stresses that we can't really imagine even to this day. Because think about it. These men that crewed this particular ship were pretty much fairly young. They were in their early 20s. And, well, they had a lot more to worry about than, oh no, the internet went down or my phone screen broke. They were more concerned about, am I going to get a bomb dropped on me today? Is a death charge going to crack open the hull and have me be crushed to death? Really, we should be very thankful for what we have, indeed. And I'll, of course, discuss this a bit more in the USS Stewart video. Well, that was certainly depressing, wasn't it? Well, here's something that should perk you right up. What's that thing say right there on that motor? That's got to be a motor. This? That's not a motor. Yeah. I am a 25-year motor salesman, and my son doesn't know what a motor looks like. That? No. Where? This. Oh, that. What brand is that? I don't know. I can't see. That's a, that's a direct current something or other. Yeah, move. Get my light. <laughs> Yeah, this is a DC motor. Okay, go. I'm no, so, hold on. I'm trying to get the bloody cost You're going to be Because I can't stand up for I don't care. <laughs> As you can see, we have the engine room here, and it looks really, really cool. Those are, of course, the diesel engines over there. The Kavala here is a diesel electric sub. The diesel engines propel it on the surface, and the electric motors propel it underwater. This was the most popular form of submarine for many, many years until the nuclear sub came about. And I recall reading an article where a Swedish diesel electric actually was able to take out quite a sizable chunk of the U.S. Navy in a war game. So, yeah, that down periscope movie is not necessarily as inaccurate as you might think. Okay, this is fucking crazy. I couldn't even walk down here. I had to walk sideways down this thing. It's so bloody tight in there. Oh, you want to laugh? You want to laugh about that? You want to be like, uh, 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 that's what somebody said, although I couldn't tell you. No, that's just, that, that, I'm not even claustrophobic, and that made me freak out a little bit. I couldn't even walk down there. Can you imagine getting depth charged by three destroyers and having to run through that? Yeah, let's go through here again. I believe this is some sort of electronic system, although I couldn't really tell you all that much. Can you imagine trying to work on that in that close of confines? Oh yeah, and that's some drawers in there. Can you imagine trying to get something out of there? While well, this is in the water and, you know, that's bobbing around. This is why you have to be pretty much certifiably insane to be a submariner. No wonder Namor is pissed off all the time. And just look at all these dials and switches once again. What these things do, I don't know. How you'd even figure it out, I guess that's why you have to go through a shitload of training before you can actually become a submariner. And now we're stepping into the aft torpedo room. Now, of course, we saw this as we were walking around outside. There's a torpedo sticking out of one of the tubes. And, of course, there's another sink, because, you know what, you can never have too many of those. And, of course, it's filled with torpedoes, but it's not filled with that many. You know, in video games where you always have endless torpedoes, well, in real life, they have to go somewhere. And man, can you imagine trying to manhandle one of those torpedoes to the bloody launcher? And if you drop it, there might be a chance of that thing going off. That's just... I, I, I think I'm going to stick to, like, something a lot safer. Like, you know, the infantry, where all you have to worry about is getting blown up. So now, let's get out of this bloody tin can and wrap up this particular video. And so that is the USS Kavala, an amazing and tough little ship. For next time, we'll be taking a look at another amazing little ship, the USS Stewart. But for now, I am General Oz, wishing you good Lexington and good Battleship Texas or whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this outdoor excursion to the USS Kavala, please consider subscribing. And if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to bring you great outdoor excursions to awesome places such as this.